Hi, this is Christoph Limplayer, and this is episode number seven of the Redis and Laravel series. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at queuing jobs with Redis. Queuing is really useful when we want to take a job and offload it into a background task. That way, the user doesn't have to wait for that job to finish. Now, Redis is not the best queuing system out there. It wasn't specifically designed for queuing, and there are ser services that were specifically designed for that job. And so it's not going to be the fastest or the most reliable one. But there, I still think it's important to include this episode because you could still use it in a situation where you have just very few jobs that you want to queue. And so it doesn't really make sense to add complexity to your layer or you have enough RAM to store everything in there and you're not looking for the absolute fastest way because Redis is still going to be fast enough. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more scalable and more reliable and that's really the best for the job, check out Beanstalk. Uh, Rescue and RabbitMQ, compare those and see which one you prefer. So let me start with a very basic example here. And on this page, we just have a sign up form and we just have a user email address. And in this use case, we're basically assuming that a user is signing up for something that's free. And so we can put that job into the background task, right? We don't have to insert their email address in the database immediately. It's in the queue. We know it's going to happen at one point or another. It might be a few seconds later. It might be a few minutes later. It doesn't really matter. We want to give the user what they want as soon as possible. Now, um, this may not be the absolute best use case for this because you may not save that much performance, but it does help offload database a little bit more. Another use case that you could look at is sending emails. So you have a contact form or something like that, and the user inputs an email and they, they hit the send button, instead of them waiting for that email to be sent with a service or something like that, just go ahead and show them a success message as long as validation is okay, and let them move on with whatever they're doing on your website. But this is a basic example I wanna walk you through. And first, let me put an email in. This time, it's not gonna be queued. It's just gonna be a regular insert in the database, and I'll just put test at withoutqueue.com hit the go button and let's check out what happens in the database. So we had a success. Let's see. And as you see, there's the input in the database. Now let me take you to the command and I'll explain this more in, in more detail in a little bit. I just want to show you the example here. And let's try again. This time it's going to be cute. And let's see, as you see, it's not in the, in the database. However, if we go in our Redis command line and we check the keys and we do L range because it is a list, you, see, you actually see I have two jobs in here. Uh, this is because I did this a second ago before recording, but the second one is the job we just put in there, okay? And so the way that I would clear this out is if I exit my command line and I do PHP artisan, let's actually work. It processed the first job in the list. So then if we go back in the Redis command line and check again, uh, let's see, I don't remember the name of the key, but it was We see one of the jobs is gone. We only have one left. And if we go in our database, check again, we see that it is in the database. So in this specific case, we did have to manually pop that job out of the queue. However, we can go back and, and do use the same command, this time run it as a daemon. And that way it will listen for any queue that goes in. And if we do again, same thing, I'll do a different email test2 at test.com and we hit go and we check the database again you see that it is in the database because now we have artisan or we use the command line artisan to boot up a daemon that's going to listen for for any new job that comes in comes in the queue and there are other services out there that ensure that this is always running so if you're in a production server you don't have to worry about manually uh, doing all this so do more research in this if you're interested. Now let's go ahead and dive into the actual code of how this works. And first let me take you in the controller 
So this is my registration controller. This is where when the user hits the button to input and inputs their email and hits the button, we go ahead and, and take the input here. And I'm just going to do a registration or I'm sorry, an email validation in my registrar.php, which is over here. And I just have it in my services here. And as you see, there's my validator here. It's just making sure it's an email. This is a required input, etc. So once this passes, I can go ahead and, and queue the actual registration. I do want to make sure it's a real email before I go ahead and queue it. I don't want somebody to just put in render random characters and hope that it works. I want to make sure it's a real email. And then if it is, then we're going to go ahead and dispatch a command job. The reason I can use this right here is because I'm, I'm using this namespace. And then I do a new register email command, which I'm also adding the, the namespace up here. And I'm just passing in this input email here. So let's take a look at this register email command. This file is stored in, sorry, the command directory right here. And you can, you can create this with Artisan as well. If you're interested in doing that, look up the documentation. I'm pretty sure it's something like like that. And then if you want it to be queued, you can also add in queued like that. And if you do that in your command line in your uh, the right folder where Artisan is located, then this will work and it'll create the files for you. And it will actually create two files depending on which parameter I think you have to add in something like this. Anyway, check the documentation and this depends on your pre preferences, but this command here is actually self handling. What that means is we have the handler inside of the command itself, instead of using one that was automatically generated here. Um, this is, you know, you add handler at the end of register email command. And that way you don't have to have this handle here. You can have it in here. This, if you have a larger application or if you have a com complex command, this will help you contain the logic and, and not have a really messy command or anything like that. But since this, mine is such a small, I mean, there's two lines of code. I don't really need a, an extra handler like that. So I just made it self handling. The way I did that was just by using this namespace here and then implementing that. And boom, it works just like that. It's very simple. All right. so. As you remember, I was calling a new register email command here and I'm passing this into, into the construct. This is what's going on here. I'm setting it locally in my public variable email so I can access it later in my handle function. In this handle function, I'm injecting a registrar, which is what I also just showed you guys. That way I can either create or I can register the email, which is what we're going to do in this screencast here. Okay, so now I have access to our email and to our registrar. The reason I'm setting this inside an array is because our registrar is using or is implementing a contract that requires this to be an array of data. So I can't just do a string or I get an error. This doesn't really matter. I'm just explaining so you're not confused as to what's going on. So this really shows you the beauty of how simple Laravel makes this job for us. I mean, can you imagine if we had to manually write all the commands to queue to implement Redis in this. I mean, this is literally all it takes. This right here, using the should be queued, will queue this to Redis and take care of the rest for us. Because with this register email, what I'm doing is I'm going in the registrar and with my register email function, I'm returning a user that's calling a static function, function register email. And if we look at our user model, my register email is right here. It's taking in an array data and it's just creating with these inputs right here. That's all it takes to do this job properly. The reason that's all it takes is because, well, really Laravel does all the heavy land lifting for us, but I also want to remind you that you have to go in your environment file and change the queue driver to Redis. If you're not using an environment file for whatever reason, not sure why you wouldn't be, but just in case, you would go in your app config, actually no, app queue. And as you see here, uh, this is pulling from our environment. But if you don't have one, then it will default to sync. So it will do a synchronous job on the local server and you would have to change this to Redis. But if you have the environment file, it already pulls this value first. So that's, um, 
that has precedence over this one. This is just a default fallback. And as you see here, you have the connection variables, the connection options you can change. It shows you sync, uh, database. It shows you Beanstalk, which I mentioned earlier. Completely forgot to mention SQS, which I believe is Amazon. Yeah, it's Amazon. And then Iron is also another option that you have here. But we're using Redis, and you can change default values here as well. Let me take you back to this. I want to do one more thing to show you that uh, this is using a trait called interacts with Q. And this is important if you want to modify things while your data is in the queue. And so I pulled up the interacts with Q trait, which is that namespace eliminate Q. If you want to take a look at that, you go in your vendor folder and then you go in Laravel framework source eliminate, go to your contracts and look for Q and then take a look at should be queued. Oh, I'm sorry, no, not should be queued. Ah, wait, I'm in the wrong folder. Let's see, interacts, eliminate, queue. Okay, so I'm not in the contract. I don't know what I was thinking. You open the, instead of contracts, you open the queue folder, and here it is, interacts with queue. And the way I want, the reason I wanted to show you this is because it has four different functions that you can choose from. You could delete the job, you can release the job back into the queue if, uh, let's say you have a number of attempts is greater than three, but you want to keep trying, you could release it back with a certain delay. So maybe five seconds, 10 seconds, two minutes, whatever you want. And then you also have the option of setting job. Like I said earlier, Laravel takes care of this by default, but if for some reason you want to change it, you could go back to your application and you could do something like if, if attempts, and I'm just doing pseudocode here, if attempts is greater than three, then release the job and job here. Um, and you know, you could do it something like this. As I said, this is just pseudocode that won't work, but you get the you get the idea and it's automatically doing it for you. Now, as an alternative to using commands, if you don't really want to set up commands for this, you have a very simple task. You just want to do it directly in the controller. You could use facades. And let me take you to the Laravel documentation on queues, which talks about this. And if we scroll down to, let's see, here for example, instead of using command, you could actually use this facade queue here. And you do a push on, uh, give it a name of emails here, in our case you might name it register, and then this is the same. We're just doing a new send email. In my case, it's new register email command and then you're passing in whatever data you want to the constructor. Now this is not recommended if uh, you have more complex things going on because then you could clutter your controller and using commands is just a better practice. Uh, this is entirely up to you and I wanted you sh to show you the alternative. This wraps up this short episode on queuing. There are a couple more episodes coming in the Redis series. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if this has helped you in any way. I like to get some feedback on these. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day.